So the origin of my talk is about 30 years ago when I was a graduate student. And uh, at that point in time, I think I had sustainability in my subconscious mind. I would write my assignments on both sides of the paper and uh, a lot of my professors would complain uh, that this is very inconvenient to us. So it's something like the inconvenient truth, right? <laughs> so, and then one professor one day cornered me and said, well, why do you do that? And I replied, well, it's because I want to save paper. And uh, the reply came back, well, we have a lot of paper, so you don't need to worry about wasting some paper. So that was that, okay. Then moving about 20 years forward, I started working with the Midwest Industrial Assessment Center. Uh, this is a large Department of Energy initiative, and there are about 25 other such centers in the country. And we are fortunate to have one on our campus. As I started working with industry in central Missouri, I realized over the years that we have a situation where every industry wants to grow and grow year over year. Not just in central Missouri, but across the nation, across the world, every other nation, all the businesses combined, everybody is trying to grow year over year. So we talk about, oh, we had 5% growth, that's really bad, and some countries say 3% is bad. So, so that's the current situation we are faced with. So what is all this growth doing to us? We are using up natural resources in enormous amounts. We are creating a lot of waste in the process, which has to go somewhere. We are also potentially having negative effects on the environment. So we need to think about what is all this growth doing, what is its effect, and what do we do about it? So let's first say what is the growth I'm talking about. So if you see on this slide, you'll see that the world population has doubled in the last 50 years. The food production has gone up three times. The energy use four times. And the economic activity five times. Not just that, we also see that what is the amount of resources that we can use and if you look here on this slide, you'll see in, in 2012, finally United Nations came up with this concept of green growth. Okay? And they, at that point in time, the world was using 70 billion tons of resources uh, from nature. We can only use 50 billion tons. And that's a number which has come about by lots of different teams of experts in different parts of the world who have worked on it. And that number we exceeded in 2001. So moving forward in the year 2050, we are going to hit 180 billion tons. So that begs the question then, can we continue with business as usual or we cannot? The answer to that lies partly in the definition of sustainability. So the United Nations also came up with this definition that sustainable development is that meets the needs of the present without compromising the needs of the future generations. So are we really doing what this definition is asking us? So let's explore this a little bit more. So sustainability has primarily three components to it. Environment, society, and economy. In this graphic, you'll see that the economy and the society is embedded inside the circle of the environment. What that means is that we cannot deplete our resources to the extent that the environment cannot sustain it anymore. So that's the big question that we are faced with here. So also let us say what are the different issues, what are the effects we are having on these three primary sustainability elements. So with regard to the environment, we are warming the earth rapidly as you've all probably heard. We are scheduled or on target 
as of now, to hit a four degree Celsius rise by the end of this century. And that will have its own dramatic effects. Air pollution, we are throwing out literally hundreds of billions of tons of smoke into the air. Deforestation is rampant, hundreds of acres per day. Water scarcity is so bad that 1.8 billion people on Earth, according to the UN, are starving for water. Our oceans have been absorbing a lot of the greenhouse effect that we talk about. So all that heat is going into the ocean water. And that's creating problems for the aquatic animals. Not just that, we are also threatening about 18,000 species on Earth who are going to be probably extinct at some point in time. So then that brings me to the next primary element, which is the economics of the situation. So we have to be mindful that viable and sustainable economic growth is needed. We cannot just have growth without sustainability. In that process, we also have to realize that energy, water, and material use has to be conducted in a very, very efficient manner. And that actually produces results for us in terms of cost savings and also by reducing the waste products that we are bringing up. The last thing we must realize, and I, in my work with the industry, I am really somewhat saddened to see that people and these industrialists who are smart people, but they don't realize that sustainability is a business prospect. It's an opportunity they are missing on. With regard to the community issues or the societal issues, we, it's all related to the growth. We have this built environment, which is so large. Yeah, these big cities are like concrete jungles. And going with that is all the transportation systems. What are they doing? They're taking away all the green space, which we all like to visit during our vacations, but they are all going away. So if we have to do anything about this, there has to be a large scale community involvement. So it looks like that this may be our future at this time, uh, our present at this time, and this may be our future, the way things are going if we don't change our course. So what can we do? So we can respond by adaptation. By adaptation, I'm, an example would be, for example, we engage in rainwater harvesting to reduce water distress. We may build seawalls to prevent flooding of seawater into the cities. We can engage in mitigation of these bad effects that we are faced with. And some example of that could be like carbon capture. So we, if we start capturing enough carbon from the air, we can reduce the effect of pollution. Innovation, that's what we are all engaged in here. But uh, one example that I can give, which I heard very recently, is that somebody has been able to produce electricity from solar panels, but at nighttime. So that's real innovation. And uh, education, of course, universities are the centers for educating technical people. But apart from that, we need to engage the public at large and educate them also. So how are we addressing all these issues? We, Of course, these are profound issues. We cannot address them all in one go at one university. But what is the part we are playing? So as was mentioned earlier, this uh, Midwest Industrial Assessment Center that we have, we are reducing energy use in industries. We are training students by efficient and effective teaching and research. We are teaching them teamwork. We are also helping industry to reduce waste. And we are also reaching out to the public in general. I work a lot with the utilities and I work with government agencies and also with nonprofits. So this is all an attempt to promote the concept of saving our environment. So let's see what is the impact this center has had over the last uh, little over 10 years. 
So we have served 258 industries. We have saved 112 million kilowatt hours of electricity every year. This, these are annual numbers. 150 megawatts of power needs, which is the equivalent of actually shutting down a 150 megawatt power plant. Uh, we have saved 326 billion BTUs of fuel use. So these three numbers combined exceed the total amount of energy used by a city of the size of Jefferson City, which is our capital. Uh, we are saving about a billion pounds of CO2 emission every year in Missouri alone. And we are saved these companies, according to DOE estimates, about $280,000 for every of these 258 industries we have served. Some of the research initiatives we are engaged in is energy storing materials for buildings. We have worked on one material which it seems from lab tests, it saves about 25% heat loss. So you can save heating loads by 25%. Uh, we are looking at more efficient electric motor drives. Why electric motors? Because that's the most common machine that's used by industry. And we are trying to develop strategies to use solar energy in manufacturing sector. If you look at the 258 industries I talked about, only actually one has solar energy. In the college-wide system, we have sustainability as our strategic area, and it, this is one of the four areas we are talking about today, and there are lots of things going on in this regard. So at the campus level, uh, we have the Environmental Affairs and Sustainability Committee, which helps us to promote sustainability on campus. I happen to be the current chair of that. So we need to reduce waste on campus. If you don't know, we are producing 25,000 pounds of waste on this campus every day. So that's our use. We need to thus increase recycling. We need to have awareness among all the student population, which is by far the largest human group here. And we need to encourage food waste composting and sustainable energy use and also green buildings. Thus, in closing, I'll say that in the short term, we really need to aggressively pursue sustainable practices. In the long run, we have to start reducing our actual use of materials, regardless of sustainability or not. And hopefully then, we can sustain life as we desire for a long time. Thank you.